Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at the volume element in spherical coordinates. Now volume element is basically the area, the surface area, we could do it along the surface, it could be inside the sphere, it doesn't really matter, but simply the surface area times the thickness of that, giving it volume. So it's the dA times the dr. So here we have a small little volume element, dV. So we'll go ahead and mark it as dV. So here we have the z-axis, here we have the y-axis, and here we have the x-axis. So, as you remember probably from before, that the area element is equal to r squared sine of theta d theta d phi. Essentially, what we have here is we have r d theta, that gives us this distance right here. We have r d phi, which gives us this distance. So when we multiply these two, we get r squared d theta d phi. But then we have to realize that this length right here diminishes as we get to the pole of that sphere, essentially. So we also have to take into account the sine of theta. That's where the sine of theta comes from. So it's r d theta times r d phi times the sine of theta, because when theta equals uh, zero degrees, the sine of zero is zero, and the sine of 90 is one. So over here we have simply uh, d r d theta r d phi, but it gets smaller and smaller as we go up. Now we multiply the times the thickness dr, so dr is the thickness, we multiply dA times dr, and we get now the volume element. So the only thing we do is we take the area element and multiply it times dr to give it a volume. So now let's go ahead and use that. We're going to simply calculate the volume of the sphere in spherical coordinates, which essentially is v is the integral of dv, and dv now you can see is defined as this. So we have to do a triple integral, and so we're going to write this as follows. So this integral of r squared dr, and that's going to be from zero to the edge of the sphere, which is radius r, that's how the sphere is defined, times the integral of sine of theta d theta. Now, theta is going to be integrated, so this here is the theta. If we then put this over here, and we find this angle right here, there's the angle phi, that's the angle theta, so it's the drop down from the z-axis, and so we're going to integrate that from theta equals zero all the way down to the bottom where theta equals pi or 180 degrees. So from zero to pi, and then we're going to integrate over the d phi, and that's going to be this angle all the way around the circle, 360 degrees, or from zero to two pi. So those are the limits for the phi angle. The limits of the theta angle are from zero to 180 degrees. For phi, it's all the way around the circle, so 360 degrees. And for r, it's from the center of the sphere to the edge of the sphere so from zero to r. Those are the limits to find the volume. So integrating each separately, so this is going to be equal to, the integral of d theta is simply equal to, uh, d phi is equal to phi, evaluated from zero to two pi, and we multiply that times the integral of sine of theta d theta. Now the reason I can do that is because I can separate all the variables into three separate integrals. So the integral of the sine of theta is the negative cosine of theta, and we evaluate that from zero to pi, and then we have r squared dr, that becomes r cubed over three from zero to r. So we have to evaluate those three integrals. That means that this is equal to, when we plug in the lower limit, we get zero, Plug in the upper limit, we get r cubed over 3. Multiply the times. When we plug in the upper limit, we get minus the cosine of pi, well, the cosine of pi is negative 1, times the minus is a positive 1, minus, when we plug in the lower limit, minus the cosine of, of 0 is 1, so that's minus a minus 1. And then we multiply the times. When we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. Plug in the upper limit, we get 2 pi. Notice that the negatives are negated, so this is 2 times 2, which is 4 times pi, and this becomes 4 pi r cubed over 3, which by now most of us realize that is indeed the volume of a sphere. You see in spherical coordinates, it's rather straightforward, and realizing that we can separate the variables as the product of three independent entities multiplied together, so we can integrate it essentially one at a time like that, and that is how it's done. How about that? It's always nice when it comes out correct. <laughs> Doesn't always come out correct.